Good evening. I want to call the meeting to order for the Laverne Planning Commission, March 30th, 2021. Um, first item is determine a quorum. Got that. Yeah, okay. Um, and then we need to approve the minutes for February 23rd, 2021. Motion to approve. I submitted. Second. Okay. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm going to abstain because I wasn't at this meeting. Okay. okay. We'll start with old business. A concept plan for Arbor Ridge requested by SEC Inc. 571 proposed residential units property located at Blair Road and South Waldron Road tax map 32 parcel 4 and tax map 29 parcels 40 and 41 PDR zoning district property owned by James N. McFarland Jr. Holmes Family Trust. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, staff has been informed that items number one and two will be deferring. Okay. So move on to three. Okay, so items one and two are deferred. We'll move on to number three. Concept plan for High Point 24 requested by Kimberly Horn. Seven building warehouse and distribution park on 144 acres. Property located at Blair Road, tax map 29, parcels 20, 20.02, 20.03, and 20.05, I-2 Heavy Industrial Zoning District. Property owned by James M. Burns, Royal Waldron, City of Laverne, and Crown Castle GT Company, LLC. Mr. Leach? I'm sorry, uh, thank you. This Mr. request Logan? is for the uh, concept plan approval for High Point 24. Um, and this project was on the agenda last month in February. And um, one of the uh, concerns was the ingress egress to the site. And so um, the, uh, the city and the applicant uh, were involved in a phone discussion. It was from the state of Tennessee. And uh, in, in that discussion, they were looking at options for access to the site. And um, it was determined, at least at this point in time, the project did not meet the state's criteria for, for doing the, what essentially would have been a, a road that came in from the north. So um, that was cause of some of the deferral. Um, at any rate, the, the plan is still to build seven uh, distribution warehouses on 144 acres and um, you can see there the property is entirely zoned I-2 which is uh, heavy industrial and um, uh, it does access um, initially the plan was to access from Blair Road and um, that after the discussions with the state uh, did not materialize a new road. Um, the, the plan is still to access off of Blair Road. And we'll get into that here in just a moment. Um, so this side is next door, right next to I-24. Uh, you can see the layout there on the screen of the seven buildings. And um, there is a private internal road. When you come off of Blair, uh, they plan to build an internal road uh, within the development that will serve all of those seven buildings. And um, kind of zoom in here a little. The, uh, trying to get my pointer. See, trying to get the pointer here to work. It, I think the batteries ran out of the other one. Um, but you can see there, um, if you're familiar with the area, you have um, the apartments in Smyrna um, that are existing and then the hotels that have been built in the last four or five years. Um, they're all adjacent to this on the south side and um, you can see there in the plan. So building um, one uh, is in this photo, it looks like it's next to Blair and it is the closest building to Blair. And so the front of that building will sit uh, approximately 95 feet off the road. Um, there's a 40 foot setback for all industrial um, from the front. So they've got 40 feet from the road. Thanks. 40 feet is 
now we've got it working again. So 40 feet from the road up to the beginning of the asphalt for the parking lot. And then they've got another 50 to 60 feet uh, beyond that. So the, the wall of this building will be back approximately 95 feet from Blair Road. And then um, this shows um, the general layout again. So this is the ingress egress for the property. And then as you travel north, you'll be on this private road that's being built by the developer. And then you can turn off a bit uh, in a couple of places and go further in the site and access those buildings. Uh, there is a water tower and existing cell tower that are uh, located and shown on this plan. Um, that property uh, will remain um, under city ownership, the, the water tower. And you'll see that in the plat um, in the next item. So this is a phasing plan. Um, the red part, kind of the dark red here in the center is phase two. This green, light green area is phase one. So it wraps around um, from the entrance of the site, goes north toward I-24, runs along 24, and then comes back south. So those buildings will be in phase one, including the building that lies closest to Blair Road. And um, going back, I'm gonna show some of the site photos and we'll come back to that discussion. So these are uh, photos taken along Blair Road. Um, this is Portico Place that's under construction and these are, um, this is their construction entrance that's currently out there today. And this shot is looking toward the interstate, so basically toward the east or southeast. And then this is the bridge uh, with the 20 mile an hour sign uh, that we've discussed over the last several weeks. And here's one of the gated drives that goes into the property. And I explained this last month, but Crown Castle, who essentially is in control of the cell tower, they have it listed, uh, the cell tower address is 327 Blair. So initially the applicant used 327 and I got some phone calls about it and they said that they couldn't find 327 and it does not show up on the GIS map from the county but it is the actual official address of the cell tower. So that's the sign that's posted to that gate. Uh, here you can see the apartments in the distance um, and some of that um, rail, the black rail fence um, that goes uh, the boundary between this property and the apartments. So this is the uh, sort of U-shaped drive that's existing. It's, uh, it's, it's older and um, old asphalt, kind of worn out, but this is the second gate, so the black gate um, that leads into the property. Um, another photo there that shows the apartments which are actually in Smyrna. Uh, those apartments are not in Laverne. So this is the boundary between the two cities. And then this shows you some of Blair Road in the curve and the no. welcome to Smyrna sign. And this was taken in February on an afternoon, probably three o'clock. So um, there was a fair amount of traffic. It really wasn't rush hour, but um, still a fair amount of traffic on Blair. So that's an overview of the photos of the site. And I didn't mention yet, um, this is the site. Some people just refer to this as the rock quarry property. So you can see here with the red dot, that's the rock quarry that sits a little bit closer to the interstate. So these diagrams uh, came out of last month's meeting um, and uh, they have to do with uh, fire service. So the uh, Kimley Horn 
who's doing the engineering on the site has provided these diagrams that show the turning radiuses for the fire trucks. And there was a concern last month uh, that perhaps one of those lanes was too narrow. Um, but since that time, staff has worked with uh, Kimley Horn and the fire marshal and uh, they're all in agreement now that the turning radius is not an issue for the fire trucks. So um, there's a couple of diagrams there that show uh, the turning movement. So on the left, you have the eastbound movement. Um, that'd be turning in from eastbound. And then you can see the radius there. And then the right side is the southbound uh, well, excuse me, there's a close-up of the eastbound. So you can see there um, how the, the fire trucks would turn. Now here's the southbound exiting um, to the right. So this would be exiting the site with the right turn with the fire truck. And um, those diagrams are also included in your packets, hard copies, if you'd like to look at those. Um, leave that covers um, the general overview of the site and um, at this point staff's not heard of, of any specific tenants um, but I'm sure they'll be announced when they when they do come in so uh, that completes the report thank you okay um, do you have anything to add mr. Leach I have more. Do we have a representative here? Good evening. Good evening. Brendan Bowles, Kimley Horn Associates, 214 Oceanside Drive, Nashville. <clears throat> Be happy to answer any questions. Did talk with the uh, fire marshal uh, for, the, for the city and was able to talk to him about those turning movements. We didn't make any adjustments to the radiuses of the curbs that are there or the design that is in your uh, full package there. Um, and if uh, you were to put a, a, a tractor trailer or 18 wheeler on that same template, you would see they would not be able to make the turn up to the right going south on Blair Road. So I um, feel like we have a good design here to prevent uh, tractor trailers from making that turn, but also allow the fire trucks to, to come out. Okay. Madam Chair, that, that was what I was gonna ask you about is, I know tractor trailers and and our fire engines, at least our large apparatus, are around the same size. And so that was going to be my question is, how, how do we make sure that we're not going to have tractor trailers going down there, but you're saying it's not wide enough for them to get? Yeah, to I mean, there's a fire truck here, and I can't quite see the exhibit up there, but I think it was like 45 feet or something, somewhere in there maybe. And, and so the WB67 is a 52-foot trailer plus the cab, I mean, it's a much larger vehicle than a, than a fire truck, and it's articulated as well. Um, and so if we were to lay that template on there, they, they, they wouldn't be able to make the turn. They'd be off, off the road and try and jump over what we're calling it for a nine inch curb there. So uh, we're pretty confident that the design will keep the truck from making that right turn. Okay, yeah, that's my concern is under the current status of uh, Blair Road, that's pretty much gonna block everything going backwards if a tractor trailer tries to make it through there. Right, of course we've added additional signage. We got one point of exit on this project as compared to some other projects we've done in the city. And so one point of access, one point to control, one point to sign, uh, and we're confident that the design that we have here geometrically is gonna limit trucks from making that right turn. We put the median in there so they can't swing out and get out in the other oncoming lane and then, and then make the turn. Uh, so based on all the engineering we've done, we believe we have a design that will allow the fire trucks and not allow the larger tractor okay. trailers. I have two questions. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, this median, um, how, how long is that? Because uh, by the way I'm looking at that, they could just swing around it in oncoming traffic and do, go around that if they wanted to. I mean, I'm. Well, yeah, it's uh, as, as I think it's 30 feet and I'm going to pull up the exhibit myself to take a look at it and I had to look at the plans. We can extend it longer if we need to. Uh, you know, at some point- It might be a consideration. I can't fix everything. Oh, no, you know? I, I know you can't. I'm just saying that might be a consideration. Yes. That you may want to make that median longer to keep, to, to, 
defer them from trying to go onto oncoming traffic. Yeah, I and mean, we could extend it another another 30 feet. Yeah, it's 30 feet long right now. Uh, my second question is, is by looking at this, it shows that this fire truck in the turning radius is going to go into oncoming traffic before it gets back. I think that's lane pretty common. You know, I mean, obviously they have sirens and they have a, a large uh, vehicle. And so what we don't want to do is continue to make the radius wider. And so that would allow tractor trailers to make the turn uh, just to facilitate the fire truck. The fire marshal has seen this turning radius. He's comfortable with it. Okay. Um, you know, it's not uncommon for them to have to swing out in, in the other lane um, to, to make the turning move. So, so no offense, but they have to follow the same traffic laws as a normal vehicle. That just because they have lights and sirens don't mean they can just go into another lane if they want to. Right. Well, so, I, yeah, so I agree with you there. Um, so if the fire department is is good with that, that's what I need to know. Thanks. Okay. Do we have any other questions? I do. Yeah, yeah, just a quick question. So to my calculations, the width of the island is seven feet. Is, is that what you're listening at? You got me, 30 foot in length. Is it seven feet what it shows? That's what it indicates on C2. I've got another enlargement here. Seven, to... seven feet sounds about right. Six foot of, of landscape area. So, and then so the curves. The, sh the, the smallest width then would be if you've got fifth, uh, 35 feet minus 70, you're at 28 feet is the, the narrowest width there. Is that, is that correct? I believe that's correct, yep. Because we, we put the median on the other side to allow that 15 foot lane for the exiting traffic. We got a 60 foot radius on this thing and a right hand decel lane. We think there's adequate room for trucks to be able to come in and not hit that median and come right in through to the site. I understand. Mm, thank you. Yes, Mr. Holliday. Um, the road improvements that are shown here on the plan, can you tell me a little about those? Yes, we are uh, have committed to doing a full depth, uh, basically rebuild and replacement of Blair Road from Sam Ridley interchange to uh, a project entry. And then we're also going to widen uh, Blair Road by the four foot uh, of extra pavement on our side of the street uh, up to almost the end of our property, a little bit, little bit short of that based on conversations we've had with the city. Um, and then we are also uh, installing a right, improving the right-hand turn lane at Sam Ridley and Blair. So there's an existing right-hand turn lane there today. Um, we are gonna be improving that right-hand turn lane to lengthen it and give some more stacking room there. Uh, I know it gets backed up in the, in the PM peak. And so uh, our traffic study did recommend that we do that we have talked to the city of smyrna and they have agreed with our uh, recommendations in our traffic study what will be the signage at the intersection of sam ridley and blair and blair road as you make that right hand turn it'll be the same as it is today as far as the stop signs it'll be a three-way stop condition as it is today and they have a blinking you know red light flashing light that warns advanced warning signage before that intersection that's there so no real changes to the um uh, how that intersection functions, uh, it's just going to be improved. And was, was, were those road improvements suggested by the city of Laverne or the town of Smyrna, or where is that commitment? Well, one, they're on these drawings that, we, that we're doing, and we have submitted a traffic impact study that to, to the town of, uh, to the city of Laverne and the town of Smyrna. Both municipalities have uh, reviewed those, and those recommendations for improvements are in that report. So did you appear before planning commission in the town of Smyrna as well? No, we did not. We don't have any, we don't have a site plan for Smyrna. It's, um, there's nothing for them to review and approve. It's just a roadway improvement project. We have met with them at least three times over the past 18 months okay. and have been communicating with their planning staff. Uh, Mr. Kevin Rigsby on the TIA, he has, uh, you know, emailed us and said he's approved the recommendations of the TIA, which are what I've described. What's the what's the expense of those road road improvements? I don't I, I don't I can't speak to that. If if Panettone would like to speak to that, they're they're welcome to. Uh, but I don't I don't have that number. I do know uh, the roadway impact fees that we're paying to the town of uh, or the city of Laverne are not being offset by that. We're still paying our full impact fees uh, in addition to the road improvements that we're that we're building. Okay, Mr. Leach, you have a question. More of a general comment, Mr. okay. The, uh, the board. Uh, so basically, the guarantee that the improvements get made is the fact that the city maintains our basically approval of the site. So they can't get building one CO'd until basically all their roadway improvements are completed. 
or they bond those in their entirety. So they've they've got two options either way to convince me to sign off. They they bond everything, and we have basically a cash promise that they'll do it, or they just do the work. Either way, that's basically how we hold people to making the improvements that we ask them to. And we'll 100% committed to doing the roadway improvements uh, early on in the project. I mean. We are in the business of, uh, I say we, you know, Panatoni and, and are in the business of building a class A warehouse industrial office park here. And we're not going to be able to lease the first building if those road, road improvements aren't completed. So um, we are committed to doing them. We're committed to doing them right. And we're committed to doing them early in the process. And this may be a question for staff rather than for you, but, but the, uh, the remainder of your road frontage on Blair Road, um, that area is actually being impacted by the subdivision across the street. And so those improvements are being made in that regard? They have bonded uh, their first phase or are bonding their first phase tonight actually. So their second phase is the one that actually contains the roadway improvements. So essentially Panatoni beat them to the punch so some of the improvements that would have been made necessarily by Portico Place will be done by Panatoni instead but they'll still have some improvements further on down into the second part of that S curve essentially compound curve actually not necessarily an S but yeah both of those tight turns that are there on Blair today the, you saw staff had, had shown the 20 mile an hour sign I, I think Mr. Leach is right. We most likely will get there first instead of Portico, so we'll make those improvements. And then the second turn, as you continue on on, on Blair, heading away from uh, Smyrna towards Laverne, uh, will be improved by Portico Place with the second phase of their project. So there are going to be some some improvements there um, along the roadway to make that a safer safer so path. All of that roadway through there on both sides of what you're doing is going to be improved. Is that what is that what I'm hearing? Is that correct? Uh, essentially, they're going to uh, not just by, you know, but by Portico Place. right. Portico Place intends to soften the curve on the second curve, and they were going to soften the first curve as you come from Smyrna. But once again, I think Pantone is going to beat them to the punch there. So it'll, I mean, it works out every way for the city. That's why right. I'm a little bit blasé about who does what. <laughs> yeah, we have roughly six hundred thousand dollars road impact fees based on the new fee schedule that we're committed to paying as, as this overall project. Um, in addition to the roadway that we're rebuilding. Madam Chair, this, this may be a question for uh, San Antonio, but um, at this point, any tenants lined up for the project? My name is Jeff Connexny, San Antonio Development Company, 35 Music Square, East Nashville. Right now, no, uh, but we are working with several, several clients that are currently in the city that want to expand their operations, so nothing to announce yet, but it's gonna be very similar to what we did on Mason Road at Park 24, that type of user. And Thank Chairman, you. I one of the quick questions just for the engineer. Is it just on the 30 foot right of way, is that going all the way to the edge of your property because it would appear that it narrows down on the C2-10? I'm sure it's going for center line of the road, but I'll make sure we have the 30 foot all the way to the edge of your property. Just looks like on the large sheet, it narrows down the last... Um, you talk, you're talking... I just want to make sure we have the 30 foot so we can, in other words, if you look at the C2-10, yes. it would appear on the, the west side as it's drawn that it narrows down, but is it still 30 foot center line to the edge of that property? Yes. Yeah. Are you talking about the main private drive? Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's all 30 foot. What, what, the road widens to 50 feet as you're coming down the hill. No, I'm going the other, the other end of the property. Go to the left side. Uh, just at the edge of the property. So where it butts up oh, against your, oh, your other oh, one. I just want to make it, sure we got it, the 30 foot. It just, does It does narrow down as you get past that last driveway entry to, um, let me see that building number. Past building 600, it does narrow down if that's what you're seeing. No, um, uh, it's a building 100 uh, where it butts up against uh, the, your uh, John M. McGillan trustee, the property next to it. It just appears that your 30 foot right of way narrows down oh uh, i see uh, what you're saying i see what you're so saying make sure we get so we're at 30 feet all the yes. way along the road yes yes we'll make sure that that happens it, it just looks it narrows uh, down it's i see not, what yes sir i see what you're saying now that's right 
Yep. Um, Madam Did Chair. Did you have a question, Mr. Lee? Yeah, just a comment. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you specifically. I'm very satisfied with the road improvement, specifically Sam Ridley to your entry, the widening and the turn lane. I want to thank you for your efforts there. The only question I have, I'd like to, I, I do think Mr. Rutledge had a good comment uh, about the median due to the trucks. So bef before we go any further, I would like to get the commission's uh, opinion. Do we feel like we need to extend that median? Because I, I think if the fire department's happy with everything else, I'm good. But I think that has some merit, Mr. Rutledge, extending that based on your comments for the, for the semis. I just, if, if, we, if we did that commission, what do you think we should add to it before we get into looking at motions? The applicant said that it's 30 feet now and yes, we could go to 60 feet and they were willing to do so. Yeah, yes, yes, sir. I don't think that's any problem. We'll be glad to extend it up. I don't see any real negatives, you know, okay. and so it, it can make some sense. Uh, if somebody does make a motion, I'd just like to consider putting that in it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Then I'd make the motion to approve with the 60-foot median uh, modification as discussed. Is there a second? A second. second. So discussion, the, the issue that we've run into is that we've not done contingencies before for the past 10 or 12 years. It opens up a whole bunch of issues now, I think this item, which I agree with, could be handled by the engineering staff themselves, meaning that we accept as submitted, there's no contingencies, and let Adam and his group handle it correctly. That way we have no contingencies in place that has given this board some real problems in history. So that's my only suggestion. Mr. Leach. Uh, Are you comfortable with that? Uh, yeah, and just a general commentary. This is... Uh, I think the first one on the list here is the concept plan. The next one we're going to talk about is preliminary plat. Yes, so both of those are not hard and fast documents. They're, they're going to come back to you hopefully next month would be my guess okay. with their actual site plan and a final plat, I assume. They have submitted, yeah. Yeah, they've submitted. So you're, basically we'll, the first round of the workshop on the site plan We'll make that comment. They'll address the comment. Then when you, excuse me, when we vote on it again, it'll be there. So, you know, you could, technically you can vote on these with a caveat. Um, there's not really a great reason to do so because we're going to see them again in two weeks. That's, that's just some staff process there. Okay. Madam okay. Chair, I'd like to ask uh, if uh, Commissioner uh, Holliday would, um, or actually if Commissioner Rutledge and Commissioner Holliday would both um, remove or rescind their motion and then make a new motion that would encompass that so that um, we can do this without a, a contingency in place. We've traditionally tried to stay away from those. I'll, I'll rescind my motion. Alderman I, I, agree. I, I mean, I, I would I'd like to see that too. It, it, makes, it, it keeps us consistent and does not get in trouble. Or well, as Mr. Leach is correct, it's going to come back. It's, it's a concept plan, so they, they, they're not disagreeing. So I'm sure when we see it in two weeks, it'll be corrected. So just to accept the concept plan okay. as set, I think will be okay. No. I make a motion to rescind my previous, I guess that's how you say that, right? You just, you just rescind it. Yeah. You don't have to make a motion. It's not a motion, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Mr. Holiday, I would fail without a second. Excuse me. I no longer have a second, so my motion fails. Okay. I make a motion to accept as submitted. Okay. We have a second. I'll second that. Okay. Commissioner Lee. No, you try ask for a vote. Yes. Yes. Aye. 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 All in favor, motion passes. Thank you. And we will see you in, in two weeks. Item number four, preliminary plat, high point 24, requested by Kimberly Horn. Four new lots created on 144 acres, property located on Blair Road, tax map 29, parcels 20. 20.02, 20.03, and 20.05, I-2 Heavy Industrial <clears throat> Industrial Zoning District, property owned by John M. Burns, Roy L. Waldron, City of Laverne, Crown Castle, GT Company, LLC. 
Mr. Logan. Thank you. This is a request for preliminary plat approval. It's also for high point 24, which is the uh, same as previous item. And um, this site is 144 acres and they are proposing um, four lots with this uh, preliminary plat. And um, and you can see uh, the same site and um, with the water tower and the cell tower. Um, so property is owned I-2, of course. And uh, I'll be glad to go through any of these photos again if, if uh, you all request. I'm gonna move on here to the uh, plat. So this is a preliminary plat layout and Again, you can see there's um, basically four lots. It's hard to see, but the uh, the largest lot is irregular shaped. It's it goes all the way up to I-24, then runs along and then comes back down, and that is um, that's one lot. And then in the center here, you have lot number two, which uh, runs roughly southwest to northeast. So you can see that there. Um, and then the water tower and the cell tower are located here where I'm pointing on the screen. So um, when all is said and done, these four lots will make way for about 1.1 million square feet of new industrial space in the city. And um, the uh, private internal road um, is also uh, shown on the plat and they've named that road Hilltop Drive. And um, that is pretty much a um, summary there of the preliminary plat. Um, and staff will be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Leach? No comment. Okay. I'll make yeah. a motion to accept that submitted. Oh, second. Yes. Aye. 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 All in favor, motion passes. Moving on to agenda item five, site plan, avenue grading requested by Reagan Smith, addition of 3,338 square feet to existing building property located at 121 Jones Boulevard, tax map 17, parcel six, I-2, heavy industrial zoning district, property owned by Barlow Builders. Is that your name and address? Good evening, Austin Pennington, 121 Jones, Laverne, Tennessee. Eric Parle, Reagan Smith, Nashville, Tennessee, 315 Woodland Street. Are there questions? I have a question. Uh, we discussed fee in lieu of for the sidewalk, and I don't see anything in here on that. Mr. Logan or Mr. Leach, can y'all address that, please? Um, that is correct. We can have the, uh, we have had the applicant in the past put it on the plan set or basically a verbal agreement at this time for basically to pay the fee in lieu uh, along Jones. Excuse me, Jones Drive up, we've got too many Joneses in the city, has also been accepted. I can uh, very quickly give them that number and they can agree to it or not. And you can vote accordingly. <laughs> I want to say in the past, didn't we have uh, some quotes for that in the past? Or I, I know it's been quite a while since we've done, we've had fee in lieu of. Uh, we typically don't have quotes. It's just a straight line calculation. It's the linear feet on the frontage that they're paying times six foot times you know ten dollars per square foot so okay can we get that that price just so that we can have it yep. um, agreed upon here and in our minutes as well Let's see. just to kind of cover everybody on that agreed yeah while they're doing that just, just a couple of questions can you just explain what the plan for the building is just uh, what, what the intent of the building is Yes, sir. Um, it's the intended use was the previous owner is what we we're intending to do, but cleaner and nicer. So the intended use for us is to have a, a mechanic shop for heavy equipment. So light traffic, light people, three or four people there. 
the class A office space we're building up front is for about five to six people to have an office there as well. Okay. And how many square feet is that building going to be? I believe 3,000. 3,000. I haven't looked in quite a while, but I believe 3,000. Okay. It's right at 12,000 square feet. The total building would be the. Are you asking about the total building? Yeah, no, I'm talking about the the, 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 the addition. Yeah, the about addition 11, change. I think it's 11,980. Okay. 11,900. I think it's like 3,300 on the new. Yeah. Those buildings, 3338. Yeah. Okay. Waiting on the calculation. Unless there's any other questions. Yeah, are there any other? Well, while he's uh, doing that calculation, just if you would explain. Uh, just some of the beautification and the sidewalk that you plan to put on down the, the front of the property. Just explain a little bit uh, what you're doing there. To what extent? To, to uh, obviously at the moment there is no beautification, no trees, no bushes there, nothing. So I hope to a, change that rapidly. <laughs> well, there should be a landscape plan that goes along with this. There is nothing there now. The current entrance has been abandoned with a fence across it. We hope to beautify that and take that out and reclaim the way that it used to be. Um, the type of office building we're putting back is very indicative of Class A anywhere office space. So I want to bring it to the standards that my current office in Franklin, Tennessee is today. Without a landscape plan to show you, it's... Tina, I just want to see if I would bring it up on the screen, but uh, obviously we can see it. I just want to let the public see it too. And there's a materials board here, right? I believe Mr. Holliday can As for the attest to the type of quality of construction and developer that we are and projects that we do. In case yeah, and, any I, and I noticed the uh, black fence screen uh, there, so I appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> are there any plans to turn in the existing gravel into a dustless surface at any point? Uh, yes. I'm not sure when, but we would like to do that, certainly, yes. Mr. Leach, you've got our number? I'm yes, not worried sir. about my dust, though. I think Sworn Already Mix does a pretty good job at doing that. <laughs> uh, so, from my calculations, you have 603.1 feet of frontage on Jones Boulevard. Uh, we require a six foot sidewalk for industrial and commercial. And it is $10 per square foot. So, the fee in lieu amount is $36,186. Is the applicant okay with that? I'm a contractor, so I can do that number for less. Is there a way I can turn in the dollar amount it would actually cost me to do the same amount of work? Well, the way things are set up is it's a fee and lieu. It's already set up with the pricing. So it, the, the concept is you either put the sidewalk in or you pay the fee and lieu. No, I certainly understand the concept of it. I just, my point was if I can do it for less and the same net result, I'm glad to do the feed and lieu. I'm not backing up on what I said last time, but at the same time, I can certainly do it for a lot less than that. And that's fine. With how we've adopted it, it's that's just, it's, if it's fee in lieu of, it's based off of those pricing. But it, do you accept that pricing for yes. fee in lieu of? Okay. Well, with that, if there's no other questions, I'll make a motion to accept as submitted. Okay. I'll second. Okay. We'll have a vote. Mr. Lake. Yes. Aye. 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 All in favor? Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to number six, addendum uh, amendment to site plan for Popeye's Thornton's requested by Barge Solutions. Modification of architectural elevations, property located at 113, 121, and 131 Charter Place. Tax map 29, parcels 2.02 and 2.08, C2 Highway Service Zoning District, property owned by Robert T. and Mary H. Street. Do we have a representative here? Okay. Can you state your name and address, please? Kate Berliner, uh, address is 2600 James Thornton Way, Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. 
Mr. Logan, do you have photos? Uh, yes, so this is an amendment to the original site plan for Thornton's and Popeye's. And of course, uh, we discussed what they're doing uh, two weeks ago at the workshop. They're uh, looking to get approval for their architectural elevations. And uh, I know the applicant and I have talked a couple times and um, there is a materials board there at the podium that will show what they are proposing. And um, the, the material, all of this is Nichiha, which I know I've talked to you all about before. Um, so that's the brand name. And uh, it is, uh, my understanding, it is a masonry material. Um, and um, just a little overview of the site. So this is the uh, imagery here. This is right next to I-24 at the Waldron Road interchange. Uh, it's formerly the Driftwood Inn, which is shown there with all the blue roofs. And um, the uh, site plan first came in last summer, believe it or not. It's been nine or 10 months ago, but um, part of this project you'll remember is to line up Charter Place with Center Point Drive. And you can see here how they're offset. Um, there's a stop sign here currently for Charter and then traffic signal is offset for center point. So they're, they're gonna fix all that with this, as part of this plan. And you can see some pictures there of the driftwood in. And um, this is the uh, site plan that uh, was submitted. And here's the elevations um, that show, so you got Thornton's here to the right and then the Popeye's restaurant is to the left. Um, and you can see here, um, again, this is the west elevation or the front. And then this is the rear elevation, which will be the east elevation. This is, um, uh, part of that will be seen from the interstate. And then here's the south elevation, which of course is uh, short and then the north with the drive-through and the drive-through windows. And then this is the gas canopy for passenger vehicles and light trucks. And you can see the columns will actually be wrapped with the material. So that'll make it look much, much better aesthetically. And then uh, this is the diesel or heavy truck canopy um, and uh, this is what was provided by the applicant showed that area and then these are the dumpster enclosures um, all four sides front and rear along with the two sides and then I can see several uh, doors here this is a large uh, a large enclosure and then this would be the smaller enclosure and then you have the front elevation with it and then here's the rear elevation and then the two sides and um, that completes all of the materials that they submitted and of course these are um, were believe emailed out to you all and I know you've got hard copies as well so uh, yes, staff will be happy to answer any questions thank you do you have anything to add Mr. Leach no. okay. questions no, good. Miss, Mr. Logan you said that this was emailed out to us I didn't receive uh, I, it. I didn't receive anything maybe it was I've emailed a lot this week and we had the two signs changed it's not a requirement that it be emailed to you all. It's just sometimes if I get them in time, I'll try to like do that. Like a hard copy? Just making sure I hadn't missed something. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. There's one shop. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
mind passing the board that you have with the building material on it, just in case anyone wants to get a close-up view of that? Thank you. Yeah. John, you want to see this? Did you want to? No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the commission? You need a few minutes to look it over. I, I have a question um, in regards to the side section. Our formerly very bright blue shutter. Um, I can see that's been removed. Yes, sir. Completely, and so that y'all didn't want to go with a different color with backlighting or, or anything? We did propose that to our vendor partner, which is Popeyes, and they declined to do so. They said actually that they would prefer to have that as a plain area. It is only 23 feet and 11 inches long, so it doesn't leave a huge void. Um, and the reason why that they, did, they didn't want to do that, they just didn't want to go off their brand for that particular piece. Okay. And I believe actually um, on the site plan itself, there's a line of trees that runs along that side of the building. So they didn't feel like it was gonna, I don't think they thought, thought it would add anything either at that point, because you aren't even gonna see it from the interstate. Okay. Anyone have questions? Good. Make a motion to accept as submitted. Or second. Second. Mr. Lee. Uh, aye. 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 All in favor? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Um. I believe we got an email that item seven was Deferred. removed. Okay, so we'll move on to item eight. Um, set bond amount for Portico Place, section two, phase one, tax map 29, parcel 20.04, requested by SEC, 78 proposed lots on 36.6 acres, PDR, plan density, residential zoning district. Mr. Logan. Thanks, so this is a request to set the bond amount for Portico Place, Section 2, Phase 1. And um, this is, of course, right across from High Point 24 that we just discussed a few items back. And uh, it's in the bend there of Blair as you leave Sam Ridley Parkway and then go north around by the veranda apartments and then come back by the uh, Van Winkle Mobile Home Park. So this is, this entire area is Portico Place. And it was approved, uh, EDR was approved in 2018. And um, so it's developing out. This phase covers 78 proposed lots on 36.68 acres. And by the way, this entire PDR is single family residential. Um, there are uh, further subdivision regulations. The developer has submitted three construction bids, an average plus the required 20% contingency and stamped estimates provided um, by the engineers. Bids are from Advance Paving Company, Gibbs Brothers Construction, and Heracas Construction Incorporated, and the engineer's estimate comes to $315,600 total. Thank you. Mr. Leach. Uh, I have reviewed the bids. One of them is um, significantly higher, which actually skews in the city's favor. So uh, with that said, bonds are, the amounts presented are acceptable. Just one comment, the one from Harass there shows it was uh, April 22nd, 2020. But uh, as Mr. Leach indicated, it's one of the higher ones, so uh, it gives us on our favor. So with that, I'll make a motion to accept as submitted. Our second. Mr. Lee. Aye. Uh, Aye. 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 All in favor? Motion passes. And item nine, bonds, letters of credit update. Uh, the only additional bond, or excuse me, uh, letter of credit that we've added was for Carruthers Crossing. So they are now able to start building, pulling their home building permits. Um, 
Other than that, not much change. Does anyone else have anything to add before we adjourn the meeting? Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.